Lord and he and he was God. I oh my gosh, I read this and I thought, you know, I, as I read this and I thought about what Manasseh did here, he repented. It said he earnestly sought God. It said he was broken. He was really repentant. He was really sorrowful what he did. You know, and, and I, I wrote a few things down here that said here. I, I said, what do I see? Or what don't I see? You know, this is the Old Testament. This is a king. In that time, you had to bring sacrifices. You had to bring offerings for repentance. I don't see no saw. I don't see no rams, do you? He was in prison. I don't see no goats. I don't see any offerings. I don't see anything. But I just, what I do see is a man with a broken heart. What I do see is a man with a, a, a contrite heart. What I do see is a man that says, oh, he's really crying out to God. What I do see is a man that's really crying out. And then, then I wrote this. I also see the prayers of his father. I also see the prayer that his father prayed for him. That God, you'd keep my children. That you'd watch over them. I also see God honoring Hezekiah's prayers. And I thought, that's what God does for us. Even though sometimes we don't see what's going on, God will honor our, our prayers for our children and our grandchildren. Amen? Amen? But what I do see, I wrote this down, what I do see is grace everywhere. Amen. What I do see is grace everywhere. What I do see is a short little prayer of earnest brokenness and I see a God that says, I get it. I see it. I love you. I know you've fallen. You know, come on now. How? And I was thinking about how bad can it get? How far can you go away from God? What can you do that would make God so angry at you that he would never forgive you? I don't think there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. You know, this guy, I said, he's up there with Paul. You know, Paul's not the chief of sinners. I don't, I don't ever hear of Paul burning his kids in a sacrifice. That's just the epitome of sickness. And yet, you know, you, oh, I would never forgive that guy. Oh, there's, there's no way that guy ought to be hung. That guy ought to be killed. That guy ought to do all. That guy ought to live in the gutter forever and ever. It doesn't say that. Oh, it just said, it just, you two verses. It just said that God heard his earnest prayer. God just seen his brokenness. God just seen he was really serious. Sometimes God's got to lead him away a little bit. Sometimes you got to get maybe pulled into something until you realize that this is stinky stuff. This is stinky stuff. But you know what? Those things in his ear, nose that was holding him captive and all that army and everything else. Right in the next verse it says, God, all it says is that God seen he was sincere. God seen he was real. God knew he was just a man. God knew he struggled with all kinds of things. God knew that, you know, he, he, God could have just, man, crushed him right there, kicked him out of the face of the earth. God could have, there could not even have been this story. Why is this story here? Why, why is it such a bad picture of such a, an ugly mess? And yet all of a sudden, in the middle of it, Jesus just shows up. In the middle of it, Jesus just says, I want to see mercy. You know that verse is mercy come running, amen? Mercy and and, and what is it? Grace, kiss. That, I think right here is where it happened. They just showed up in that prison cell. Man, they were just a, I, I, I believe it. I believe it was a Holy Spirit move in that cell that moment. He broke down and said, oh God, I, I, what did I do? What have I done? I, my daddy served you. My, my mom served you. This is, I know this was the best thing that could have happened to me. I'm so foolish and all this. And God said, I see your heart, son. I see what I see. I have good things planned for you. I, I still want you to be the king. I, I've got good things planned for you. I, I see your heart. I know you repent. I know you're struggling with these things. I want to raise you up and change your life. I had to read part of the story to get to this. Did you get what I'm saying? I just feel like I could have just talked about it. But I wanted to read a little bit of how this good, godly king and all that was going on and all the blessings. And this shouldn't have happened to this young man. He should have just kept on reaping the benefits of his dad. But you know what? We are all vulnerable. We're all susceptible. Don't sit there and say, well, this isn't going to happen to them or that. No, 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 no. And the enemy comes in sometimes like a flood. 
And he brings his little things in, and sometimes it's very, you know, gradual and casual, and you don't really realize it. And sometimes, sometimes we got to be drawn away with the things that we got caught up in, and we, we're sitting there, and we're saying, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Help me, Lord. I, I don't read any more. It doesn't say any, much more about Manasseh except that he went back. If you read it, God restored him. Now, whole, the whole land didn't come back to God like he did at that time, but he honored God. He got rid of all the witchcraft. He got rid of all those things. He got, he, he got rid of all the, you know, the idols that he had put out in the courtyard. It said, one of the ways it said he started building up the walls again. I think it's time to start building up the walls. Amen. I see, let's start, start time to build up the walls in our home and our family. I don't know why. I just felt like God was showing me this, that there is such a powerful, powerful draw in this day we're living in of the enemy to destroy ministers, pastors, young people, older people, Christians that have been living for God for years. Don't, don't just look at them and scoff and say, oh, they deserve what they got. You don't know what, you don't know. Don't, don't do, that's dangerous to say. That's dangerous to say. God had great plans for Manasseh. I think Manasseh forgot. And then God caused him to forget what he did. Hallelujah. Either way. But you know what? I know there's hope. There's hope. There's hope. There's, there's a God that loves us. There's a God that cares for you. There's a God that is wanting to bring you out of what you're in. There's a, there's a God that is, he sent his only son to die for us. That he meets us where we're at every time. Amen. You know, I, I'm, 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 so, I, I'm, I'm so tired of people saying, I can't do this. I didn't know you can, but with Jesus' help, you can. Amen. With Jesus' help, you can live for him. With Jesus' help, you can now overcome that sin. With Jesus' help, you can overcome that struggle. With Jesus' help, you can overcome that temptation or that temper or whatever it is you're dealing with. With Jesus' help, amen? amen. But you've got to give it to Jesus. Right. You've got to let him come into your heart and life and change you. Well, Brother Chris, I've been trying to let him change you. Just keep on letting him. Yeah. It's that preventative maintenance every day. <clears throat> you get to that place like Manasseh, you blew it. Maybe you didn't even blow it like him. Maybe you felt like you did. I don't know. One, I just know one thing. When after I read the story, I don't want to say I was relieved, but I was so reminded of what a good God we have. I was so reminded of how much God puts up with us. I was so reminded of how much he loves us because he sees in spite of us, in spite of our sin, he sees his potential in us. He knows what we can do and be for God. Amen. That's why you can't give up praying for the world, your kids, your co-workers, your family. You got to just keep giving them to God and, and ask God to help you every day. Amen. Help, help you every day. No, Manasseh could have went and ran and sat in the closet somewhere. I'm embarrassed. I blew it. You know, no. He got up. He washed his hands of that. He said, God, help me. You forgave me. David said against you and you only. You know what? You got the bottom line is it's between you and God. You and you only have I sinned, oh Lord. And when you repent, it's between you and God. Amen. If, you, if someone else was involved in the process of that and you need to say, forgive me, I'm sorry, whatever, then you need to do that. But it's between you and God. And when he does it, just say, oh, thank you, God. You did it again. I don't know what happened. I don't know. It doesn't say, man. I don't know. There was the biggest Syrian army and they had the king and they didn't like let kings go because they wanted just to, most of the time they could, took the king's head and cut it off and hung it outside on the post for everyone to see that they conquered that city. But it says that Manasseh, went back. God made a way. God made a way. I don't know what he did, but when God does it, just watch out. When God does it, just say, okay, God, it's you. You ever see someone just get saved, come back and say, wow, well, I don't know how that happened. That, that's God. That's just God. It, it's, I, I did all this. No, you didn't do nothing. You were just a vessel, a tool in the hands of God. God does it. Amen. My child will never get saved. My grandkids will never get saved. I'll never get saved. Don't you say that. Quit saying that. Quit limiting God on who he is in your life and what he can do. Even if you don't think he can do it, he can do it. 
And whatever the process is in, the, in this, you say, God, give me the grace to go through this and trust you in it. I say that all the time about Lord Nicole. I want it to be changed. I want it to be different. But at the end of the day, at the end of the hour, at the end of the week, at whatever I'm at, at the end of it, I always say, God, just give me the grace. Just give me your grace. If I can just have your grace and your strength, I'll be okay. Amen? By grace I stand. Amen? It's by grace I stand. I, you stand in his grace. You stand in his unmerited love and favor in your life. You stand a recipient of God's goodness and you say, wow, this is just so awesome. I don't know what the heck God sees in me and why. Quit beating yourself up. It's not about you. It's about his plan for mankind. God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That none should perish. That all should come to eternal life. He knows your struggles. He knows your failures. He knows your, all those things. Just bring it to him. If you've got to keep bringing it, just keep bringing it. Amen? And he's going to get you freedom. He's going to get you out of that mess. Don't turn, turn to no one else. Give it to Jesus today. You've got a heart. You've got struggles. You've got fears. Give it to Jesus today. If Jesus can change Manasseh, he can change you and me. If he can change his heart, he can change his life. He can give him a fresh lease on life. He can renew his. And you read that a little bit after that. I'm not going to get into that. He went back to change man. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Oh, not everyone jumped on the bandwagon like his daddy, but it's okay. He said, I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to honor God. I'm, gonna, you know, I'm not saying he didn't have any more struggles or whatever, but you know what? God loved him. God has a plan for you today. There's a plan for me today. Why do we got to go through this? I don't know. Someday we'll all find out. As I tell them this sometime. And then when we get there, we ain't going to ask anyway. <laughs> it won't matter. As long as we see Jesus. I say it all the time. I'm going to ask God, why Nikki? Why this? Why that? And really deep down, I know I'm not going to ask him because it's not going to matter. It's just not going to matter once I'm with him in glory. Me and her running around in the streets and whatever. I don't, know, I, I don't call them streets of gold when I think of her. I, I see me and her running through a field of daisies. Because that's my dream with her. Wherever, whatever you're thinking, I know I'm going to get off here. I don't live for just now. If I had to live for just now, I'd be a mess. I hear I'm going through this part, but you know what? I know there's something better. Uh, there's something greater. There's something beyond all this stuff around me, and I just got to trust in God, and I got to realize when I read these stories and this stuff that goes on that I'm not the only man that puts on his britches and struggles with this stuff, that men and kings and women and everybody else went through things, and if they repented and they asked God to help them, God did. Yes. Amen. And God restored them, and God helped them. And that's the business God's in. So quit saying I've done too much. I've been too bad. I've failed too many times. Quit saying that. I, I think I, as far as I'm concerned, this guy is, he's, he takes the first place for bad guys for me. He takes first place. I think he passed up Paul as far as I'm concerned. But God loved him. Two sentences. But it was a big prayer. I said, God, earnestly. God, I think. He did one of those like, uh, tugs. You gotta get a tug with God. He, he did a tug, he's like, God, you gotta help me. He did a tug. He got a hold of God's heart. You know, you can get a hold of God's heart. I need to stop this, I know I'm going on. You get to get a hold of God's heart. But he's right there, he's close by. Listening to us. Come on up, Pastor. I love you. I hope this encouraged you today. I hope you know that no matter what you're going through in life, God's got a plan for you. You've not gone too far, and your family's not gone too far. It's not the end of the road. There are not has beens. Maybe you can't pray for them, but someone else can. Don't ever give up on God. Amen. And don't give up on your loved ones. God has got something great planned for all of us. I thank him for the journey that he's took me through and the life that he's given me. Not everything's been perfect, but I wouldn't want it any other way. I love him. I love you today. Be encouraged of the Lord. He's the best thing that ever happens to us. Amen. He's, he's the best thing that ever happened to me, and he will be for you as well. Apostle Paul said, if I had hope in this life only, I'd be of all men most miserable. You know what? Thank God.
God, there's something beyond what we can see with our eyes. Amen. Something that we can enter into. You know, I've read this story on several different occasions. And it was, it was amazing to me when I read it how that the grace of God reached for Manasseh. Because I don't know about you, they said he was king in Israel for 55 years. That's a long time to be away from God. When they came and took him, I don't know how old he was when they took him, but because it doesn't really say, but he sacrificed his children, he had went to witches, he had done everything imaginable that was wrong, and yet God still loved him. And that's my boggling for me because sometimes we think God doesn't love us because we made a mistake. We missed the mark. We didn't hit everything exactly like we thought we should and so we're always, oh, you know, God, uh, I just think maybe you just ought to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> if he was going to kill anybody, he'd kill this guy. Mm-hmm. But God just keeps reaching to us. Yeah. I don't get it sometimes. I would like to say I get it. And then I'm thinking while you're sharing this, how many men of God have never really applied this message to their life that are away from God right now? Yes. I'm talking about ministers. Yes. They fell into a trap of something that the devil had set for them and they fell down and they were never able to recover. A lot of times it's because the church wouldn't let them recover mm-hmm. because they kicked them out and said, you know, you're no good anymore. We can't use you any longer. But God is in the business of pulling you back. You know, and I was reading in Galatians this morning, if you see someone fall into sin like that, you that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, showing love. I mean, you want to keep the commandment of Jesus? He said, love your neighbor like you love yourself. That was the commandment of Jesus. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Who is my neighbor? Anybody that's out there, somebody that's fallen down, somebody that's had a mess. I don't mean to keep rehashing this, but it's like, in my heart I'm thinking, God, I know some men that carried the gospel, that preached, that no longer feel that they can even do it because the church says they can't. But God didn't say they couldn't. God didn't say they couldn't come back. God didn't say they could come, not be restored and, and, and be in ministry and do something again for his kingdom. God didn't say that. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that's my rub, I guess, with the church. It just bothers me sometimes how mean the church can be. You that are watching my Facebook, we're not mean here. We're not, we're not going to kick you aside if you fall down, if you mess up, or if you make a mistake. Listen, you can come sit in this congregation, and we'll love you, and we'll help you get through whatever you got to get through, because we all got to get through something ourselves. We all need each other. Sometimes I feel like I'm not going to make it. But you know what? With God's help and your love, I'll be okay. Amen. I'll be okay. And you will too. You will too. Don't quit. Don't abandon what you have in God. Don't let anybody steal from you what God has given you. He's given you His grace. He's given you His love. And He's holding you. In fact, the Scripture says you're engraved on the palms of His hands. I'm thinking, wow. God looks at His hands and He sees me. Just a thrilling thought. Praise the Lord. Thank God for this story. You say, well, it's an Old Testament story. It's an Old Testament story full of grace. Yes, amen. Just like when you read the story of David, it's an Old Testament story full of grace. You know what? And God was showing grace before he ever gave us grace. So don't get mad if it's in the Old Testament. I mean, you need to go back and read it again. In fact, it's our schoolmaster, the scripture says, to bring us to Christ. If you don't understand the old, you'll never be able to comprehend and understand the new. It's just impossible. God's given us a road map to lead us into his grace. And I, he's not mad at you. He loves you, son. He does. More than you could ever, ever know. If he can save me, and he can save Manasseh, and he can save Pastor, he can save anybody. 
Father, we love you today. You are so full of mercy. You are so full of love. You are so full of grace. It's you, Lord, that restores us. It's you that fixes us when we're broken. It's you, Lord, that heals us when we're sick. It's you, Lord, that restores us when we have been lost. It's you, O oh God, that keeps drawing us to yourself. Thank you, Lord. It's always been you. It's all about you, Father. It's what we come here for. That's why we're here this morning. We come here into this church to lift our voices and to sing praise and to give glory and to honor to who you are. You are the source and strength of all good things in our life. We need you today. More than we can put into words, we need you. Father, those that watch us, dear Lord, by Facebook, sometimes I'm amazed how many people tune in. And I just pray in Jesus' name for them today. If they feel abandoned and they feel like no one cares and they feel like they can't go on, I pray right now that the grace and the mercy that we experienced in our life, they would feel it in theirs, wherever they're at, in their living room, whatever, God, that they would feel it in their life and that they would know, Lord, they have an opportunity to come come back and say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me and cleanse me with your blood. Wash me and make me as white as snow. Let my life be renewed in you today. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord. And I'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus be Lord of all. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be
house me the sound that says a wretch like me. I was was lost, but now I found was blind. Thank God for His Spirit. Yes, There's nothing like it. You can't compare it to anything else. And uh, I appreciate the Lord just touching us, touching this young man's life. Yes, and, uh, we give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Have a great day in the Lord. Sun shining. We've been blessed in October with hot weather. In fact, sometimes too hot. But. Uh, God's been faithful, and we, we love Him. Amen. Pray for the people in the South. They're going through some real stormy things right now. And so just pray for those folks down there. I you know, tell everybody all the time, so I'm sure glad I live in Michigan. I see over things going on in other places. But I feel for those people. God, help them in their hour of need. And you know what? I'm, I'm like you. I, I really realize that... We've deteriorated from the time that we became a nation and started following Jesus. We've gone 
farther and farther away. We have every kind of idol in this country you can imagine. We have every kind of God that is worshipped in this nation that you can imagine. And I'm sorry, but we didn't start that way. We've gone in the other direction. And that's what Manasseh did. He went in the other direction. We can't do that. And if we can't stop our nation from going in that direction, we can stop ourselves from going in that direction. We can say, Lord Jesus, I will shine for you wherever I'm at. I'll be a light in a dark, dark world. Amen? Thank you, Lord, for your touch. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Father, for this service. We bless your name and we lift you high and we give you glory and we praise you for all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord.